Hey guys, welcome to another video for anatomy and physiology. In this video, we're going to be discussing the nervous system. And to be more specific, we're going to be talking about the meninges of the nervous system. So we're highlighting the central nervous system. So if you remember, that's the brain and the spinal cord. Okay. And we're talking about what protects the brain and the spinal cord. So remember that the brain and the spinal cord are protected by bone, the head, the skull, and the spinal cord, the vertebrae. And even more so, more internally, the spinal cord and the brain are protected by what we call meninges. So these are different layers of, of tissue that protect uh, th these very vital organs. So the very first layer that we're going to talk about. Now, one of the easy ways to remember uh, the layers and the order of the layers is to think of what the purpose of these layers is. And the purpose of these protective layers are to to pad the brain and the, and the uh, spinal cord, the central nervous system. So they want to pad, you want to add cushion to it. So, you know, the human being is very apt to, to falling, or, you know, when you're playing games, you know, if you're playing football, you're being tackled in your brain, your head, your body's always being jolted. And, and so your body's designed to, in my opinion, to play. And so when you're playing, you sometimes absorb a lot of shock from a person or an object or whatever that may be, or, or a soccer ball hitting you in the head. And so, and so the body, inside the body, there's, de there's protective mechanisms that are designed to protect the most, arguably the most important aspect of your body, and that's the brain and the spinal cord. So again, it's designed to pad these systems. So the word pad actually helps us in, um, in looking at the first three layers of, of, of this protective system. So the word P will go for pia matter. Pia matter is the first layer of protective tissue that wraps around, literally it wraps around the spinal cord and the brain like saran wrap. So if you could imagine saran wrap and then all the air being sucked out and the, and the paper just um, absorbing or, or wrapping around, per, around all the contours of, of whatever it's wrapping around, uh, that's what the pia matter does. Pia matter literally stands for um, tender mother, soft mother. Pia mater, actually, sorry. Um, I always say matter. I always said matter, but it's actually pia mater. Uh, just think of a tender mother. What does a tender mother do to her child? She hugs it. And likewise, the pia mater hugs intimately around all the contours of the spinal cord and the brain. So secondly, the next, the next layer, so you have pad, P, P a mater, and then the A is the arachnoid mater. Now, it's called arachnoid mater because, because when you look at it microscopically, it actually looks like, especially when you look at the subarachnoid space, it looks like there's spider webs, arachnoid, right? So A for arachnoid mater, and then D, dura mater. Dura mater literally means hard mother, and this relates this relates to the fact that the, the dura mater is a very tough tissue. Okay, it's almost like canvas, so it's very difficult to tear into or to break. And that's the third, the third layer of the um, of the meninges, and these are what protect the spinal cord and the brain. So now I'm going to take a look at the spinal cord again, still, and I'm going to have a superficial take a superficial view of this. So you'll notice that I have my spinal roots coming out on the lateral ends. I have the dorsal and the ventral ends and the, the root ganglions. But again, I want to highlight the spinal cord and what's protecting that. So again, the, the pia mater wraps around intimately around all the contours of the spinal cord. And then secondly, remember pad A, you have the arachnoid mater, and that's the blue. Now the arachnoid mater is actually the darker blue of what you see, and the lighter blue the lighter blue is the subarachnoid space. The subarachnoid space is, is what creates a lot of the cushion because inside of that space is actually filled with cerebral spinal fluid. That's what creates that shock absorption for, for the spinal cord. Okay, so the spinal cord and the brain literally float, are floating uh, in this subarachnoid space in that cerebral spinal fluid. And then last but not least again, pad with the D, you have the dura mater. That's the outside, the, the external, the third layer of this protective meninges. Let's kind of review this for a second. If I'm looking at this in layers, again, my first, the first thing is the spinal cord or my brain. That's the part that's being protected. And then I have the pia mater, tender mother, arachnoid mater, and this ara subarachnoid space that has the cerebral spinal fluid, and the dura mater, the, the hard mother, right? This is the tough tissue, the canvas tissue, the outer layer. 
Now, something I didn't discuss is the epidural later. Epi, epi meaning above, epidural, so it's just above the dura mater. And this is the epidural space. This space is in between the dura mater and the actual bone, the, the harder uh, protective layer of all of this, the skull or the vertebrae. That's where mothers during pregnancy will get the uh, epidural, the medicine the, um, that will numb the, uh, the lower body for pregnancy. All right, so let's take a closer look at what's happening in the head. Now, again, we're talking about the three layers again. So we're going to take a section of the head and cut it out. We're going to um, zoom into it right now, and then we're going to cut out this and look at the layers. So let's take a look at what we're, what we're seeing here. We have the gray matter in the brain. So that's the brain that you're seeing there, and that's the white matter of the brain. So that's the part that we're protecting. And again, this is, this is the padding of the brain. So the first layer is the pia mater. And as you, as you notice there, like I said before, it wraps around all the contours of the brain. Um, maybe an easy way to remember this is that the pia mater, the pia mater, it sinks with the sulci and it rises with the gyrus. Okay, remember that the sulci is the, uh, the indentions in the brain. So it sinks with the sulci and rises with the gyrus. So it hugs tenderly uh, the brain intimately, uh, like a mom hugs her child, right? And then just above that, we have the arachnoid mater. And just in between that and the uh, pia mater, we have the subarachnoid space that is filled with the cerebral spinal fluid. Now, one of the things that I want to point out there is that you see here, you see some, uh, you see some arachnoid granulations. They kind of look like cauliflower. And these are microscopic uh, protrusions that go into the venous system. And this is where the cerebral spinal fluid will actually drain out. Because the cerebral spinal fluid is constantly being remade in the brain uh, by, some, by the cells called the choroid plexus. So they're constantly putting in new cerebral spinal fluid, which means uh, old cere cerebral spinal fluid is being drained out through the, uh, the venous system. Okay. And uh, that's actually right there. That's what I'm highlighting right there. That's the, uh, the venous system. And then the last layer is the dura mater. And then, of course, you see the skull and the fatty tissue and skin just above that. So what I would like to do right now is I want to take a minute to just explain how cerebral spinal fluid is made and how it, it's kind of passed around through the brain and the, and the spinal cord. So, like I mentioned before, cerebral spinal fluid is, is created in the choroid plexus. These are cells that are inside the brain. These are, if you can imagine kind of, um, you know, if you can imagine a, a water well that feeds a city water, uh, these are what these are. These are called ventricles. And you have two large lateral ventricles that, that are on, on the lateral aspect of the head. And here's where the cerebral spinal fluid is first made and secreted. And it fills up this, this cavern, if you will, in the brain. And as it's filled up, okay, it drains into what's called the ventricular foramen. Remember foramen from bones? Foramen meaning uh, basically a hole. Okay, so it goes into the foramen and it drains into the next cavern, which we call the third ventricle. And in this ventricle, more cerebral spinal fluid is made. And of course, as you can imagine, as more is being made, it starts to drain out through what's called the cerebral aqueduct. And there it is right there. And it drains into the fourth ventricle. Okay, and I'm kind of let me back up a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that that fourth ventricle and I'm gonna zoom into it. Let's zoom into it. There it is. And here, more more cerebral spinal fluid is made by the choroid plexus. Okay, and as more is made, that cerebral spinal fluid is then drained out two apertures, two openings. You have a lateral aperture and a median aperture, and these these holes basically go into the subarachnoid space. And so the cerebral spinal fluid will drain down into the spine and it surrounds and cushions the spine. And then it will go around the cerebellum. Okay, and then it will go all the way around, wrapping around the brain, cushioning the brain, giving it uh, some shock absorption. And one of the things that I want to highlight again is the arachnoid granulations, because that CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid, it, it does its job, it cushions the brain, and then uh, some of it gets drained out through the granulations right there. Okay, and then they drain out into the into the venous system, which I have in a darker blue. And then just above that, I have the skull and then the the skin. Okay, guys. Oh, looks like we're going to show another. Uh, we're going to go through this again, so you can see the cerebral spinal fluid going around the brain, protecting the cerebr cerebellum and the cerebrum. 
Okay, and that does it for this video, guys. So again, we talked about the meninges, the cerebrospinal fluid, and how it cushions and protects the brain and spinal cord, guys. Thanks for watching, and good luck in your studying.